Alright, that turned out pretty sick, actually. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday! I know some of you are at work, and I hope you're having a good time dodging work by watching this show match. It's bright and early here on the West Coast, 7 a.m. Not the earliest we've ever been, but uh, bright and early for some StarCraft 2, that's for sure. And again, I'll, I'll say this one last time before we get too far into the game. If you guys hear audio discrepancies, if the game sounds too loud, if I'm too loud, or too quiet, or anything like that, do let us know in chat so we can take a peek and make sure that we get these uh, things fixed ASAP. But I'm Rifkin. And back from vacation is Zombie Grub, and we're casting his best of seven for you. Hope you're not sick of TVP yet, because spawning here in the bottom right corner of Foxtrot Labs, playing for Fnatic, it's going to be the blue Protoss, Harstom. Never left Oz, the red Terran. It's Millennium's 4GG. Okay, so a quick little uh, recap again for those who missed the this, this small talk before we get into the match today. 4GG and Hearthstone, I, I'm actually going to ask them after we get out of this first game here, but they have seriously played upwards of like 300 games, and that's not exaggerating, because uh, they were helping each other practice for their WCS matches. Now, sadly, this show match was delayed for quite some time because they both did so well in WCS. Again, the joke is the fact that the map pool was originally like Frost and such. That's a whole season ago. It's how long it took to get this show match underway. But, uh, you know, WCS season has pretty much concluded. It's just BlizzCon left at this point. Nobody has to worry about hiding builds. They can play at their fullest potential. And I'm really excited to see which of these guys. I mean, like, to me personally, I kind of want to give a little bit of an edge to 4GG. But I did as well when Bunny fought against Harstom in that best of seven, and Harstom wiped the floor with Bunny, so I don't know what to think about this matchup. What are your yeah. thoughts? Well, that is the real kicker, is like whether Portage G is going to be blindsided by strategies from Harstom, which I don't really talk about because he like, moved on, but like, you know, versus Bunny, it was amazing at the time. Then you look back at the series, and it was just, it was a little bit disappointing, too. I mean, like. Oh, Bunny could have made like really good games, except that he kept on getting tricked. But that's the thing, it's not easy to trick a damn player. With diligence of a Reaper, combination scans, and in some cases like Joshi with sneaky STVs, usually they have a pretty good hold on what's going on, but... Yeah, well, you know, I think the big problem was also that Bunny, uh, part of what you do for dropping is you also get a lot of scouting. So, if you open up with a drop, for instance, with a Woodermine drop, you get a lot of scouting. If you just drop with the first 12 minutes or whatever it is, then yeah. you will get a lot of scouting. So Bunny really never did that. He assumed that since the first Reaper saw like a Colossus, that it was going to be Colossus. And then he just, you know, never scouted it again until his, he had like 16 Vikings. <laughs> and I was like, oh, whoopsie. Uh, 4GG, I think, is going to be a little more aggressive about it. And as such, shouldn't be as caught off guard. Yeah, 4GG actually, I think, is in, in general a uh, bit more of an aggressive player than Bunny. And that's hard to say because we've seen Bunny do some pretty crazy aggressive things. But. Uh, I don't know, at the same time, it's not like, it's really interesting that it's such a scenario where there is not really as big a potential for mind games, again, like, referencing the way the Hearthstone played that series, but it's more the fact that, like, you know, 4GG streams a lot, Hearthstone's been streaming too, they practice each other, like, I mean, this is the first time I think we've ever pitted someone up against one another where they have just full 100% knowledge of their opponent's playstyle without any question. Well, there was that Flash Zest series. We didn't Which get to cast is, that though, so yeah, okay, on. we didn't get to cast it, but like, the it was like the pinnacle, I guess, of like people who like understood each other. Well, I guess it was more flash understanding us, but whatever. Um, but that was kind of just like that. That blew my mind. I don't know if we were able to see that again. Like you know, Flash saw like the blink all and whatever it was coming without shouting it at all. <laughs> like, okay, buddy, okay, try you know, try harder, whatever. But uh, <clears throat> yeah. Ooh, he's by the he's by the way he's gonna be streaming. Have you seen that? Isn't that cool? Yeah, it was October cool. 17th, I think. Or something, I, I don't know. But yeah, last time he was pretty unimpressed, but... Uh, <clears throat> Harstom is going for a Twilight Council open, which doesn't mean anything yet. We have to wait until, like, you know, yeah, what else has he put down is... with it. Well, it's, it's normally, like, such a regular part of the build, but he's, he's gone very out of his way to hide this. And uh, what I want to stress more so is he's done some really cool SimCity things here. Uh, now, the Reaper is dancing around. It might actually go down this time. Or maybe not, just barely. But look at the pylon placement. This keeps the Reaper from getting up on that free cliff. He's uh, intentionally built around the mineral lines to make sure that Reaper can't scout very easily. I mean, it's it's very minor things, but... <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, <laughs> but they're very important, and that's what's been deterring this Reaper from getting a lot of that free information. But blink or not, this is a pretty big push coming. Uh, typical early game stuff out of a Terran, and hopefully uh, Harson is going to be quick to that uh, photon overcharge button. Yeah, yeah. He will have to be. Uh, it's just, you know, wear this off entirely. Because his gateways are not done. Oh, if the attack comes later, he will have actually a lot of uh, 
a lot of gateways to use. I mean, he's thrown down four, so two would have been normal. He would have gone on the Colossus or what have you. Four, he's getting up to a blink all in. Yeah. Five, uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the blink will come down. It kind of locks it down. It's interesting that she uses to do this on Foxtrot. Normally, we talk about the spawn locations, and I don't know that it plays as big of a factor on this, but there is that back door, which does make a nominal difference when it comes to this particular strategy, but... Just like maps like Polar Knight, or no, sorry, not Polar Knight, uh, King Sejong Station, he's gonna have to walk all the way around to make use of that back door. Yeah. Well, I think what's really annoying about Foxtrot is no matter what positions you have, the uh, where you put your bunker at your natural is always a little awkward. So, of course, um, the other positions, it's like you put it on the ramp, or you put it next to your command center. And these ones, do you put it in the choke, which is really far away, or do you put it closer to your command center? And of course, you know, the farther away it goes, the longer it takes SCDs to pull, and the longer it takes to put them back to mining. So it's yeah, always a commitment point. to do it. Oh, well, a little bit later here on the overcharge. Oh, well, I should tell him. I mean, I'm not a stalker, so you should tell him what's going on. Uh, and he can't really run away because he doesn't have stim. He's going to have to wait until some finishes just try and take as many blink stalkers down with him as he builds up bunkers. But this is a great move because, I mean, you want to be fighting stalkers over here now when there's 20 of them outside your natural constantly blinking back and never dying. So even if it's only picking up two or three right now, he's hitting way more than two or three. This is way better than fighting home defensively. Now, the thing yeah. for Harston, like, he's still in a position of power, but he doesn't have to continue with the all-in, I feel. Uh, you know, he's got those gateways down, doesn't have to burn them. He's kind of revealed Blink, so if he's if he's scared that 4GG is going to bunker out, that 4GG is going to have that natural defense set and ready to go, doesn't have to devote, devote to this. But I think what the biggest thing he's going to see is there's only one bunker here on the front lines. Yeah, pretty surprising from 4GG. I mean, he does pull a couple of SCVs, but he might be thinking that it's a fake still. Uh, or maybe he's just really big on the fact that this production is, you know, pretty good right now. He did go for 14 CC. I don't know. Blink Soccer just have a way of, like, looking not that bad and then suddenly being really bad. Well, there's this easier to buffer and results we're taking care of. So, I mean, this really shouldn't get too out of hand, I feel. One of the big things you see him doing is diving forward here with these stutter steps. Normally something you can't do because you have to back away from the Zealots. But this allows them to stay in range of the Stalkers after they blink to disengage. Lots of SCVs are going to die in this hold, but that's the thing he has to hold. Stim goes off once again, but without those medevacs just yet, they are on the way. These units are incredibly low. Uh, Harsum has stopped, you know, producing probes. He isn't going uh, away from this. And 4GG, I mean, he has so much Marauder production, and those medevacs are about to come out. And plus one is about to finish. It looks like he will... Oh, this is, oh, maybe not. questionable. I mean, it's well, looking good for beating the Stalkers back, but for Harsum, I mean, at this point, he may have over-dedicated. Plus one's finishing up in the second two, I mean... Yeah, with just Marauders left, these guys aren't really going to die that easily. Stalkers get shredded by the Marauders too, that the uh, Professor Shell Fire is just always a little too much, but... Uh, oddly enough, there's actually not really any anti-airs so the Mothership could <laughs> do some pretty good work, I guess. It's like one yeah. Marine in there, was it one, two Marines? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so well, Harsum, you know, he's recognized that this maybe isn't going to be the end, so he throws out another gas. He killed a lot of workers. He had 24 workers yeah. died, so it's possible that he could try and, you know, uh, come off the back of this, but of course it's upgrade list without any, you know, really good splash tech, so. Quick at time, our problem is, though, uh, what he needs to be sniping off all these medevacs, of course. Stalker counts still retaining pretty high, but the Marauder counts growing incessantly large. And the problem is, if you've got like 19 Custom Shells coming at you, you're not really blinking away from that, no matter how good your micro is. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting to see like, you know, uh, Templar Archives or Robo come down. He took that out of the gas, but nothing so far. Just really committing to this all in, but 4 has so much. Yeah, the choice, I mean, I guess he is a little bit maybe afraid that he can't disengage. Nice pickup micro on this Marauder, by the way. Medivacs are out of energy, but the stalker count is dwindling, and uh, the Marauders are just too many. He's going to tap out of game one. GG, and Harstum will fall. But, eh, that's only game one.